So what is the difference between flat fading and frequency selective fading? And I've shown here the impulse response for a channel with a single path, where we've taken the time reference to be the time that the path is received. So I put it at zero. So this is the impulse response. It's just a delta function at time zero. We know the Fourier transform of the delta function is a horizontal equal elements of each frequency. And this is flat. So this is where we get the word flat from. Uh, the fading part is because perhaps this gain goes up and down over time, uh, in which case uh, this will go up and down over time, and sometimes it might go down low, in which case we call fading, and sometimes it's higher, uh, in, but it's flat fading if you have a single path. Let's introduce another path. So let's think about having two paths and what is going to happen in that case. So let's say we had two paths. Let's say perhaps they are of equal uh, height, uh, just as an example. Uh, and let's say they are of time capital T apart. Well, what is that going to have in the frequency domain? Uh, and let's, uh, let's think about this uh, in terms of its components. So one thing before I show the components, let's think about this. The response of this channel to a sine wave, if the sine wave had a frequency where the distance here, capital T, was exactly half a wavelength, then the first wave uh, that re is received from the first impulse is going to uh, give you this waveform at the receiver. And then the second one, which is coming in at from this path, uh, if it's the same amplitude, uh, is going to give you this waveform at the receiver. And uh, so this is going to be the addition of these two will be the overall received signal. And we can see here that if it, if, if it is the same height, then this negative part of the waveform is exactly cancelled out by this positive part here. And so for this frequency, for this wavelength, which corresponds to a frequency, there will be complete cancellation. Okay, so this is starting to see that it's going to be frequency dependent because if I had a waveform which was at a different frequency, then I think you can see that these two uh, pulses here would not completely cancel. So any other frequency, you're not going to get this situation where this negative is exactly cancelled by the positive that comes from the second path. So this is a two-path channel. So you can see that that's frequency dependent. And let's try to understand this in terms of Fourier transforms. So the Fourier transform of the addition of two delta functions is the, the addition of the two Fourier transforms. So what's the Fourier transform of the first one? It's what we just showed here. And the important thing that's uh, not shown here, because the phase is zero, uh, but we haven't shown the phase. We didn't need to because the phase was zero. But let me draw it out now explicitly here, uh, uh, over here. So the Fourier transform of the uh, first delta has a gain. We're going to draw it in terms of the gain and Next to it, I'm going to draw the angle of that Fourier transform. Okay, we've only shown the, the magnitude here, uh, but it's also got a phase. So in this, for the first delta function, it's a constant. That's what we had over here. But the phase is zero because it's zero offset. Okay, now for the second delta function, the Fourier transform of this is still in the magnitude, is still a constant and it's the same constant height because these two are the same in this example that I gave. Uh, so the magnitude is that, but the phase is now a different phase. And if we remember the formula for a Fourier transform, x minus t, if you take a time shift, that gives you a Fourier transform, which is e to the minus j omega t times the, the Fourier transform. Okay, so this is the equation with the time shift, and it means that in the frequency domain, you have a linear phase shift of minus omega capital T. So as omega gets bigger, this phase shift is negative. And so it gives you a slope on this curve. This is the angle of the Fourier transform. The slope here is of value of, of angle capital T, and at some point, that will get to a value of minus pi. And at some frequency here, at that value frequency, the phase will be minus pi, which means you've got one signal that has a phase of zero, 
and the other signal at that frequency has a phase of minus pi, and at that time, at, th at that frequency, they will exactly cancel. They've got equal heights, but opposite phase, so the result will be a complete cancellation at that frequency. So let's draw the overall uh, Fourier transform then. It's the addition of these two Fourier transforms, and uh, I'm going to draw the, the overall magnitude here, the magnitude of, of h omega, in this case, with the two uh, with the two uh, paths. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so this now we can see at that frequency there, which is, uh, this is pi, where omega times t equals pi. So it's the value of omega of negative, uh, of pi on t. So there's one at pi on t, there's one at negative pi on t, uh, and so on. Uh, and then we, it repeats because this goes up to uh, 2 pi on t, and then you're going to have the same thing repeating as the frequencies go. So this is the response, the, the Fourier transform of this two path. Of course, in mobile communications, there's many more paths. I'm just drawing two. So when is your channel? This channel here, overall, is frequency selective. So this is the difference between frequency flat and frequency selective. Another important thing though is you can have a frequency selective channel, but you may not be using all of this bandwidth for your signal. And so therefore your communication system may still be able to operate with flat fading. So for example, if you only chose to use this frequency band for your channel, uh, of your communication signal and you fitted your entire communication signal into just this frequency band, then you would only be experiencing this portion of the channel and then that would be essentially flat. So this is narrow band. If you have narrow band communications, then you tend to have flat fading, even if the overall channel has these notches in it. Okay, so narrow band communication, and that means low data rate, low data rate. So if you're sending at a low data rate, then you tend to have a flat uh, fading channel. If you were instead to use, let's say, this whole portion over here of the frequency band, then you would be having a wide band signaling. So this is, depends on your data rate. So this is a wide band uh, signal, and in this case, this corresponds to high data rates. So if you have high data rates, you tend to have a frequency selective channel. So high data rates means broadband, which means there's a good chance that the channel will have frequency notches in it, and that's frequency selective. So low data rates tend to be flat fading, high data rates tend to be frequency selective. And the one uh, anomaly here probably is OFDM. If you have OFDM, you are using a wide bandwidth, but because you are using parallel subchannels, each parallel subchannel is narrow band. And so in the parallel subchannels, it is narrow band fading. Even though overall you are using a, you are sending a high data rate sim signal. So if you want more information on OFDM, there's links below this uh, video, uh, and um, there's also links to other videos on the channel. So if you found this video to be helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up, uh, and also subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the webpage in the link below for a complete categorized list of all the videos on the channel.